hello at netflix.com. If you see this documentary and you like it, just get in touch. We can sell you all rights, no problem. Okay, welcome everybody. That's the third episode of our racing documentary, Fast Life. And uh, now we are at the Nürburgring, oldest track in Germany from 1927. So you know it for the legendary Nordschleife, but we are driving Nürburgring Grand Prix track. Alexandra is fully, highly motivated. Hello again. <laughs> Nürburgring is a really technical track. Each sector is different to each other. And, but yeah, of course, it's, it's an amazing track. So much history behind it. And I'm just really grateful to be here again for the second time racing here. And we'll see what happens during this race weekend. So I was first here last year, October. That was my final race of my season. It wasn't Sports Cup, it was GTC. And I tested there once right before the, the, actual, the actual race weekend. Coming into this race weekend, I had worked a lot on my mental side with a mental coach and by myself. I learned a lot during the Hockenheim race weekend. Of course, I took the positives, not really focusing on the negatives because it's all part of motorsport. There's ups and downs. Of course, I, I have to learn to adapt in any situation and to not dwell on the past and just focus on the next session or next race. I told myself that I have to, first of all, enjoy it. That's, that's the main part. So I would say that my main goal for this weekend is to really concentrate on, on each race in each session to take the maximum out of every, I mean, out of every session, honestly. My performance is there, like I know my, I, I can perform really, really well and I have shown it a, a million times, but then of course it all comes to the mental side of motorsport, which can be really tough. Each sport is different to, to, to one another, but I would say that you have to be strong mentally, for sure, in order to compete at the highest level. And in motorsport, I would say that, of course, nothing goes to plan. And that's why you have to know how to adapt for each situation. I would say that I'm constantly competing with myself and trying to be better, like everyone, of course. You have to have a strong mindset in motorsport, but for sure, it's difficult sometimes being a woman in this strongly dominated um, by men sport because you face a lot of criticism for sure when you're not competing, competing at your best. Even like everyday situations, I'm always underestimated by even my, my closest, my, my close friends, let's say. Of course, you have to fight for your place here in motorsport. But it motivates me even more. Like I know most of the drivers here from last year and I would say that a few of them or let's say most of them are really supportive, which is really nice because nowadays it's difficult to find such, I would say, supportive drivers, but I feel really good here. I would say that it's really important to not lose hope 
because, for example, like today, we had five sessions and it was mixed conditions throughout the whole four sessions. So I couldn't really get into pace and show my full potential. But then I tried looking at the positives. I tried to adapt, of course, because nothing's the same in, uh, in each uh, race weekend. So you have, to, you have to take the maximum. But at the end of the day, the last session, it was, it was way better than the previous ones. So I'm happy. I'm seeing my progress. Saturday morning starts with a free practice session. Normally we use the free practice session to do a qualifying sim with uh, new tires, low fuel, and just go out and send it for maybe seven laps or something like that. This morning the sun was shining and then, typically Eiffel weather I would say, uh, you turn your head around and then you see dark skies, rain coming in. So just before free practice starts, it started to rain. We tried to decide what to do. Go out on slicks, go out on rain tires, what, what should we do? So in the end it was like only five minutes of rain, so the track was immediately dry again. Surprisingly conditions throughout the whole day were actually fine. It was dry all day. Thankfully we had time to put on a new set of tires during the free practice in the morning. So I had some idea what to expect from the car. And we knew we were good prepared for qualifying. Today qualifying it was a bit special because we knew before that we got a grid penalty for the last race Hockenheim and we already knew that she would not be able to go into the top 10. So it was P16 in the end after qualifying but we got this grid penalty so it was P21 for the start which is yeah as you can guess not the best position to start a race. Normally when we're at pre-grid, I tend to focus a lot on, let's say, creating some sort of path that I have to follow during the, the, the race start. Stay on your left side, because everybody wants to go on the inside. There might be a traffic jam on the inside, so you can gain some places on the outside. And if you're on the outside, you're in the right position for turn two and turn three. And also turn four, when everybody's on the inside again, everybody's bunching up. And like we uh, practice on the sim, you know, everybody's on the inside, you're on the outside, and you can maybe have a run on them on the outside. The engineer is telling her how to do it and how to go faster, and I'm just there for making her happy. Keep her smile up and just get rid of every bad mood in her head, so just focus on, on happy things and just go out and, yeah, fucking send the car down the main straight and kick some asses, that's what I tell her. So, nothing special. Just go out and send it. That's what I tell her. And then she's laughing, and when she's laughing, she's happy. And when she's happy, she can really push. And it really helps hearing from, for example, from my team right before the door closes. It's different when you hear it right before the race starts and not an hour before. So you really, focus on the last things you hear before, before of course, the adrenaline hits. Knowing that I'm starting from P21, I told myself that I have nothing to lose, just I have to enjoy it and be aggressive. You ready? Go, 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 go.
she made a really amazing start. And I managed to overtake three cars under braking and t turn one. I'm happy because during the whole race, the weather was perfect, I would say, for the first time ever in Nürburgring. I was trying to catch the, the, the group in front of me. Her lap times were really good. During the race, I heard from my engineer that I was doing really well and my, 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 my sectors were really fast. And he told me to keep pushing because it turns out I had a really consistent race. And at some point I was fastest on track, which let's say was really nice to hear. Yeah, in the end we were all quite happy with her performance over the day and especially with her race performance. It was really good. She had, I think, one or two overtakes in the end, so it ended up in a, in a P16 finish from P21 coming, which is really okay. She did her best lap times for the whole weekend. It was the biggest step we made um, since we started working with Alexandra. Overall, I'm happy with, with my performance throughout the race, because starting from 21st and then ending, ending up 16th is a solid result let's say but i'm looking forward to race two for sure i think i'll, I'll be starting from 18th well sunday morning we woke up and it was already a bit it was not raining hard but it was a bit damp i would say typical eiffel weather maybe when we left the hotel and went to the track, it started drying very fast. Qualifying endurance was our first outing. 9 a.m. in the morning, the track was already completely dry. I would say that we had luck during our endurance qualifying because it was, we had dry conditions and also during the race, which was really good for me, for example, because I, I could push straight from the beginning and our, stra our strategy in the beginning was that my teammate jumps in the car with a fresher set of tires, does four push laps, and then he pits and I go in the car for another five or six laps just to get, just for a warm up before my, my race two. Pavel Lefterov was supporting Alexandra for the endurance race. The problem more or less was that um, there's another race, or there was another race the same weekend in France, it's called Le Mans, I don't know. And uh, Pavel was there and so he arrived Saturday night. So he had no seat time in the car, no seat time in the car on this track and he went out uh, 9 a.m. to qualifying straight ahead. And yeah, he did a good job. So. Um, he did good lap times. It was P4 in the end, which is really, really good when you have absolutely no preparation and only six laps. So good job, great job of Pavel. Then Alexandra jumped into the car. A very positive thing is that I pushed straight from the beginning right after I went out of the box. Compared to the, um, the free practice in the endurance yesterday, uh, there wasn't a lot of traffic, which was really good for me because all I could think about is just driving, focusing on, on, on braking later, accelerating quicker. That's how I managed to do my best lap.
So she did the best lap time like uh, the whole weekend, Sunday morning, and she was really confident for the race man. So Sunday sprint race two. Well, surprisingly, both my races were in dry conditions, which I'm really happy about because I could finally drive in dry conditions and progress even more. The only thing that I could think about during the formation lap and the last corners where they showed us the grid board was that I have to stay really close to the car in front of me in order to, let's say, have more momentum to overtake during in, in the way to T1. So I managed to do a really good start. But then there was a traffic jam in, in the, on the inside of turn one. So I had to stay on the outside where there wasn't a lot of grip, but I managed to, I managed to work it well. Then, unfortunately, let's say beginning of the second sector, my, my teammate crashed with another car and I had to brake because he was closer to me as I was, let's say, behind. There was debris on, on the track and I had to avoid it. And the race control sent out the safety car during the first lap. So I think we lost about four laps under a safety car and then all I could think about again was to overtake but unfortunately I had some pickup from other debris on, on track and the car was undrivable so I had to really slow down into the corners in order to keep to, let's say to keep the car stable because it was over rotating a lot and I, I could have lost it uh, a couple of times, but I managed it, of course. And then let's say that during the whole race, I was catching up to the group in front of me and was trying to defend from the, the two cars behind me. So at the end of sprint race two, I finished 13th, but still it was, it was a really good race compared to race one on Saturday where I was driving alone. So for sure a lot more adrenaline. She had a really good race. Her race pace was immediately there. She made most of the places, three places directly from the start and then she pulled away. Her pace was there straight from the beginning. We made good progress. So. She was happy, the team was happy, engineers were happy, everybody was happy. So the difference between a sprint race and an endurance race is that the sprint race is 30 minutes long and it's driven only by one driver. In the endurance race, we're two drivers. We're driving for 60 minutes, 30 minutes uh, the first driver, and then the second driver, when, when the car pits in, the second driver comes in the car and finishes the race. Endurance race, it was, it was difficult because we knew from the, from the weather radar that we can expect rain. It was not quite clear, is it heavy rain, light rain, is it monsoon rain? We prepared one set of rain tires, one set of slick tires. Our engineers, they made, I think they worked on a really good strategy for the whole race. And um, so it was like a bit 
It was wet in the air, you know, but it was not it was not wet on the ground. The track was completely dry, but at the same time it was raining, so we decided to stick to this the slick tire as everybody else were on slick, so it didn't make sense that we go out on wet. But as soon as we were standing on pre-grid, uh, the rain, let's say, was increasing, but we weren't really sure what we should do, so we just stick to our, um, our plan. Yeah, Alexandra had a good start. Again, a good start, I would say. And she had really good battles. She was really, she was really pushing. And, and if, you, if you have seen the live stream, she was flashing all the time. She was really happy. She was, I think this was her best race so far. From, from her, her happiness and her feelings, you know, it was like you you really felt that she's confident with the car and she's really having fun and it's all good and all fine and she was really sending it and it was great. So we were catching up the other guys in front, uh, but then at some point I had to defend from the car behind me as he was catching up quickly, and then. Again, I was stuck behind another slow car. As soon as we, we overtook the, the slower car, we could manage to catch the cars ahead. Then, it came in, beached the car in a good year turn, so it was T, what is it, eight or something like that here, Mühlenbachschleife. And then the pit stop window opened and we knew that maybe the safety car will be deployed and we waited and waited and no safety car came. And then we made the call to come in for mandatory driver change. The pit stop was really good. I think this was one of our, or maybe let's say our best pit stop so far. Uh, as soon as I stopped the car, I jumped straight out of the, out of the, out of the car. So we gained a lot of seconds there. And then everything went smoothly. And right at the moment when Pavel went out, they deployed the safety car. And at that moment, we knew we were fucked because we lost one lap behind the safety car. So, um, yeah. Then Pavel was behind the safety car, the first car behind the safety car, but he was not on the leading lap anymore. And everybody else pitted when the safety car came out. So we had to wait, wait, wait until the safety car whiffed them by. So he tried to catch up the queue to be on the back of the queue for the safety car restart and then it started to rain and it started really to rain. It was not like a bit of rain, it was rain. So rain tires and the strategy or the idea was to get when he was weaved by by the safety car one lap and then straight into the pit box Performance pit stop, bam, 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 tire change, out again, and all good. The problem was, pit stop was amazingly quick. The guys did a really good job. He went out again, and then he had some slow Caymans in front. And because there was still safety car on track, he was not allowed to overtake the Caymans. And the Caymans were on slicks, still on slicks. So they are so slow that we lost so much time behind these Caymans on slicks. And you're not allowed to overtake because safety car, full course yellow, blah, blah, blah. And in the end, safety car came in right in that lap. And then Pavel was pushing like hell. But in the end, it was just P7. So if the safety car didn't come out during the race, I'm sure that we would have won the race or even be on the podium because we had a really fast car and I'm really thankful to our mechanics and team. The car was perfect all, all race weekend, but again, it's motorsport, everything happens. So overall, I had a really, let's say, good weekend. I learned a lot. I progressed a lot throughout throughout the three, three days. And I would say that I'm really happy about my, my stint in the endurance race because I was aggressive from the beginning and I was, I was on pace. 
Even for the first time, I felt extremely relaxed during the endurance race. And that's why I had an amazing stint. Mentally, I was, I was prepared for sure. Compared to yesterday, I felt really good, even from the, from the beginning of the day. And I felt confident because at the end of the day, I knew that, well, I have nothing to lose and I just have to enjoy it. And I think that's, let's say that, that was my most enjoyable endurance race. So when I look back to the whole, uh, over the whole weekend, so starting on Friday, she made a good progress, like I told you before. Saturday, even better, even better. We found some really good pace. We, we, we found some problems she had with the car, seating position, things like that. We changed some, some smaller things and she really felt comfortable. And on Sunday, you really felt that she's comfortable in the car. She's comfortable, she feels comfortable with herself. She was really feeling everything. She was so happy. And when, when we keep this momentum for Red Bull Ring, which is the next race, so the next episode is Red Bull Ring, I think the Red Bull Ring will completely blast everything away. It will be a great event, hopefully. <laughs>